Hey, have you ever wondered why people get baptized? Or, or what baptism even is? I mean, it looks kind of weird on the surface, right? I mean, people put on white robes and then they go down to the lake or to the river and then somebody holds them underwater and pulls them back up. Or if you've ever seen it in a church, um, there's like a little box or a cabinet that has water in it. And then people just line up and they go into the water and they come back up and they're all excited. And you've probably seen that and wondered if maybe the practice came from something old or pagan or barbaric or maybe, you know, the meaning, the original meaning was lost to time. Um, no, uh, as Christians, we understand uh, where baptism came from. I'm sure you could understand that back in the Middle East, uh, things were dirty, <laughs> right? You'd, your hands and your feet would get covered with dirt. And uh, it was unheard of that you would go and eat a meal and not wash first, or that you would go into uh, a neighbor's house and not wash yourself first to present yourself as being clean, or to go into a place of worship, right? You wouldn't go into a place of worship dirty. You would wash first. And so over time, there was adopted these different washing rituals, these cleansing rituals, and you would wash different parts of your body, or um, there were a different amount of time that you would spend washing your body. And so by the time Yeshua comes, by the time Jesus comes, right, Jesus is a, a teacher, but he's also a healer, and he's a miracle worker, and he develops this crowd, these, these mass of people that begin to follow him. And while he's teaching and while he's alive, these people all want to be a part of what he is doing. They want to be a part of this same story. Well, near the end of his story, Jesus is killed, and many people saw him die. Jesus was laid in a tomb, and there was many people who knew the location of that tomb. They knew where he was buried. But after, almost within a week of that event, over 500 people saw him alive. There were more people that saw him living after that event than had witnessed him die and was buried. And so you can imagine that now this story has even more momentum. And there's even more people that want to be a part of this story. They want to be a part of this Jesus story. I mean, there's no other story that's being spoken of. There's nothing else on TV. There's nothing else in the newspapers. This is the story. And so his followers only grow more and more. And so to belong to the story, to consider yourself part of this story, what people would do is they adopted this uh, washing ritual and incorporated it into the Jesus story by saying that I have a life. It's my old life, my worldly life, my physical life, my sinful life. And I don't want to live that life anymore. I want to live a life that's new. I want to live a life that's abundant. I want to live a life that's the kind of life that Jesus lived. I want to identify with Jesus. I want to identify with his story. And so symbolically, a believer in Christ, a follower of Jesus, we call ourselves disciples, we symbolically put ourselves underwater as a way of symbolizing death, identifying with Christ in his death. And then we come up out of the water as a symbol of resurrection, identifying with Christ in his resurrection. And that moment that a new disciple is baptized marks the beginning of walking on this road of following Jesus, of being his disciple. And so one of the books in the Bible is a book called Romans. And in the book of Romans, the author, Paul, writes down very methodically um, a lot of his ideas about what it means to follow Jesus and what it means to live like Jesus in the world that we live in. And in chapter 6, he talks a little bit about baptism and about claiming that new life, that abundant life, that joy-filled life. 
that same life that Christ lived. And he says, you know what? It's possible that you can live that life. No, no, not in heaven, not one day, not in the distant future, now, today. Not a life of existing, not a life of monotony and the grind, right? A joy-filled, abundant life. This Sunday, Walden Church, that's what we're going to look at. Okay? I'll see you there. Bye.